Hi, welcome to the Swedish Tank Museum. Um, today, I'm in a very special position, in the driver's seat of the very first car that I owned. My father bought this vehicle, and that was in 1978, 11th of December, when we collected it. I was 15, no, 14 years old, and I had it for my 15th birthday in January 1979. So how come buy a, a car of this kind when you're 15 years old? Yes, because you are interested in military vehicles from the very, very, very beginning of my youth. So here I am back again, and I realized when I got into the driver's seat that <clears throat> The steering wheel has moved a bit since I was here last time. Uh, it's more closer to my body. Um, I don't know what gives any indication, but uh, well, things happen during the years. So this is my first car, and I think I was nine years old when I first drove a tank standing on the driver's position of an S-tank, looking out through the periscope because I wasn't long enough to look over the edge. Drove it maybe 10, 15 yards and then reversed back again. And uh, my mo mother or my father was on the outside, scared to death that the, their son was inside that tank driving it. Uh, so the interest came from somewhere a long time ago, and when I was um, close to 15, I wanted to have a Jeep, and my father was kind enough to buy one for money that he probably didn't have. Uh, I've owned it since then, and I checked it is now 40 years, 41 years since that day. Um, restored it two times during these years, and I actually used it as a tractor uh, back when I was uh, 16, I was allowed in Sweden to drive a very special registration of a, a car, uh, maximum speed 30 kilometers an hour. So I drove it from 16 till I was 18 when I had my first driver's license and at that time I could make it an ordinary car again. A uh, lot of fun with this vehicle, many times I've been stuck out in the in the mud. Um, and what is it? Well, it's, um, it's a Willis Jeep or a Ford uh, GPW, depends on uh, who you ask. Um, the American Army needed um, vehicles for their army, so in 1941 to 1945, more than 600,000 of these vehicles were made in US, brought to Europe during the Second World War and after the Second World War, they were sold or given as aid to different countries. This particular vehicle ended up in Norway sometime after the Second World War, and it was imported from Norway sometime around 1977 or something like that, I think, when the Norwegian army sold out their jeeps to civilians. They had them in use until late 1970s, early 1980s. So a lot of vehicles that are now on the market, they came out from, from Norway. Uh, I'm not gonna tell you everything there is to know about uh, Willis Jeep, uh, because uh, there is loads, you can read it everywhere. Um, this actually is a mix of both, both Willis and Ford. The frame is a Ford, but the body is a Willis. Uh, so how come? Well, that's because at the end of the war or after the war, they restored vehicles in big depots and they dismantled them. And then when they put them together again, they took parts from different piles. So everything fitted, but it wasn't from the original vehicle from the beginning. So this is uh, sort of mixture, but uh, 
I call it a Ford because a uh, major part of it, I think, is a Ford. So I'm going to show you a few interesting details of this kind of vehicle. So we will start with um, the lights at the front. On the front left wing there is a blackout headlight with a small um, cap on top. So there's a slit inside here which gives a very uh, narrow in front of the vehicle uh, light so you can see on the left side of the vehicle where you are driving in the middle of the night. Down here there are two indicators which is also blackout light so you, if you're coming towards the vehicle if you see one spot it's very long distance. If that turns into two spots you can assume that well I'm closer and when they are four, two in each, and you see four dots, you know now it's very, very close. And you have the same system at the rear. If you're coming from the rear, you see one spot, two spots, or four spots, depending on, on the distance between you and the vehicle in front of you. And that's something that is very common on um, most military vehicles in some kind that you have night uh, driving um, lights of some kind. And one interesting thing is the wipers, which are hand cranked. And that's something that was very much laugh when you go, go to, the, to the station to get it um, examined for, for um, if it's roadworthy or not, and the guy never seen this before. Well, is this for real? Yes, it works. Um, problem is when you're driving in very lot of rain, you have to sit all the time. So you need to have a passenger to be the operator. Uh, some vehicles they had uh, with uh, vacuum assisting. Uh, so, but this is a, from the beginning, the original. So um, normally you had a windshield up and it's possible to, to raise the, the glass so you can see out, uh, especially when it's, when it's dark. It's better to not look through the, the window. But, no, it's, this is also a perfect way of having better view over the, the terrain. Uh, but when you're driving fast, it's a lot of wind and Sometimes there's a, a wasp or a bumblebee or whatever that hits you directly in your forehead or in the eye. So, well, it happened a lot. Um, well, that's the front part of the. So we move into the driving seat. So this is the safety belt. Unhook it so you don't fall out of the vehicle. There is no other safety protection in the vehicle. Um, under the seat, the petrol tank or the gas tank. So here is where you fill, fill up petrol. Driver's position, well, what you need. Speedometer in the, in the middle, um, fuel, oil pressure, um, temperature and charging. Uh, this is the instrument panel lights, which are this button, um, shock and uh, um, hand accelerator, ignition, lighting switch and for the blackout driving on the left of the wing. Pedals and the starting button is in fact up here. That's the starting button. And on the other side, there is the button on the left on the floor is for the headlights uh, changing for depending on if you want to have far away or close enough. Three speed gearbox and for the transfer case, high, low range and 
front or only rear driving. This is the handbrake. So it's quite simple, but uh, enough controls to drive it and the horn in the middle. So all military vehicles, they have small interesting details uh, of different kinds and this have a few and uh, I'm going to show you one of them that's, well, not, that's quite clever. You have to raise the hood when you have engine problems and uh, to be able to see what you're doing in the dark, there is the possibility to use the headlights and use them as working lights into the engine compartment, which is not so bad idea. So this was um, the story about this particular vehicle. Um, had it for more than 41 years and I will keep it forever, I think. It's a very nice car, but I haven't driven it for some years now. But um, well, one day I will squeeze my in, in behind the steering wheel again and get it out running. So um, I hope that you have enjoyed um, this and other films and we we'll see you in uh, another movie in the near future. If you like this film, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and there you can find more interesting vehicles.